So who is the boss in Tower of God? It's a question that we've been asking ourselves since the start of season three. If you don't know, the boss is the person who spoke with both Cha and Doan regarding Bomb. He's the person who spoke to them before they were sealed and sort of set them on their course after they were awoken. Sometimes he's called the captain, sometimes the boss, but either way, he is that individual that clearly looks like Jihad, and many of us, including myself, thought it was Jihad when first meeting him, but he has a mole next to his mouth. Jihad does not have a mole anywhere on his face, and Wang Nan, while having a mole, his mole is next to his eye. He's also the same person that is in charge or commands Yule and Kel. Or we don't know if he's always been the same person because Yule later implies that perhaps the captain that they spoke to earlier is not the same one, but regardless, he is connected to Yule as well. This is something that I think a lot of people forget about because they don't think Yule is important when in fact he is connected to one of the biggest mysteries in the entire series. Who is the boss? First of all, he's someone who is thousands of years old because we know he spoke to Cha and Doan. He's a person with history. He's a person who's been around for an extremely long period of time, longer than most rankers who are currently alive. So he has experience. And even then, when speaking to Cha and Doan, he specifically tells Doan that he's had a lot of adventures and she calls him a gifted storyteller. Again, he very clearly looks like Jihad and even SIU has confirmed the visual resemblance. Obviously, this isn't a coincidence. We're supposed to think, wait a minute, that guy looks familiar. The thing about this nameless adventure that is extremely odd. We know he's not just a regular character because A, he looks like Jihad, but B, he knew that Doan and Cha were going to be sealed, so he came to them right before it was going to happen, thereby influencing their mentality, and he also knew that the world would still be at war when they were unsealed. This man knew so much about Cha, Doan, the tower, and even Jihad himself and the war that not only did he know that the war would still be continuing even after Cha and Doan are awoken, but he knew about Bomb. This is weird, right? Because not everyone just knows about Bomb. Like, it's weird enough that, like, Data Han Sung Yu seems to know something about Bomb and V in particular, but the fact that this guy, thousands and thousands of years ago during the age of Genesis, knew that Bomb himself would be active right when they were awoken while the war was continuing is very weird. It's very interesting, right? It begs the question, how does he know this? And I want to point out something that Doan says about this man's personality. She says that his eyes were so full of curiosity and she's unsure whether his intentions are good or evil. It's almost like she could see it either way. He doesn't seem like a bad person, but he also didn't seem like a good person. So to figure out who this man is, I think it's important to figure out why he did this. Why did he talk to Doan? Why did he talk to Cha? How does he know all these things? Because if we can find out his goal, I think we can sort of connect the dots and start to figure out who he is. Now, I really don't have a concrete answer. This is just a theory, but we're going to try to get down to the nitty gritty here. So it's important to point out he came at the literal perfect time before Cha and Doan were sealed. This means he wanted to influence Cha and Doan. Now, the weird thing about this is he tells the two of them two different things. He gets to the same point, but he does it in two different ways. The way that he tells Doan about Bomb is that this person is going to bring about change, which will result in death. It will result in a bloody war. And Doan says, I don't want that. So when she wakes up and sees Bomb, she says, wait a minute, you're the guy who's going to cause more bloodshed. But with Cha, he says, this guy's going to bring about change. And he comes from a noble bloodline and he's going to basically be a good person. He says his desire for peace will come true. And it's weird to me that he points out the noble bloodline because again, this guy not only knows about Bomb, but knows that he's an irregular, knows that he's the son of V, or maybe he's the son of Arlen. Which one is the noble bloodline, I wonder? Let me know in the comments. It's almost like he's reading the future, right? Keep that in mind. Now, another weird thing to throw in here is that we see during one of the scenes with Yule on the ship that this man, this captain, 
has stated. If it's the same one that Yule has been communicating with, and if it's the same boss, which is 99% confirmed because of the way the chapters were situated, and because of Doan's reaction, that this person knows Jihad. Okay, knows Jihad, did all these things, could almost see the future. It sounds an awful lot like what Jihad can do by reading fate. We saw Jihad do this, he knew Kel Halam's team was gonna show up. Jihad can more or less kinda see the future. Okay, so if we take everything into account, this man, whether he has fate powers like Jihad, or whatever, however he knows this, whether Jihad's telling him, who knows. His goal seems to be letting Bomb kinda just do his thing. He seems to be sort of using Bomb but maybe not for his own personal reasons, maybe because he's curious about what Bomb's goal will be, where Bomb is going to end up. Now let's look at what he does as the captain, right? The captain of Yule, Kel, and Levy, who are basically these regulars that Jihad's army hires to do their bidding. So he orders them to capture Iwa, right? So Yule and Kel capture Iwa, they capture Danwa, so they can use Bomb. They know that Bomb's biggest weakness is the people who are close to him. And it works, they're able to use them as hostages, right? Now, the weird part about this is that he commands them to do this, they fight Bomb, Yule is doing everything, and then he tells them where Jin Sung Ha is located. If you don't remember, Yule is the one who tells them that they know where Bomb's master is, and then later on he tells them he's at the nest. Obviously, Yule doesn't have this information. Yule is essentially a mouthpiece for the captain or the boss. Yule even says this. He tells Doan, you know, some things that we're going to get into, and then Yule's like, wait a minute, does he mean Juvial Grace? Like, Yule has no idea. So this man knew where Jin Sung Ha was being kept. That information certainly wasn't public. And also, by the way, he knew where Bomb and company were, like, at the wall, and they showed up right at the perfect time, and Bomb was like, how'd you find us? Like, this guy, he knows way too much. Now, there's a big Yule scene here, and I've seen a lot of reactors look at this scene, and, and so many of them miss this scene, or they think it's like a comedic scene, like, oh, it's just Yule being goofy. This is an important scene. Extremely important scene. Yule says this is exactly what the captain expected. I'm here on orders from the captain. In which point, Doan says, Captain? Surprised, and he says, Yes, the captain asked me to tell you. You're free to choose who to side with, but don't decide too quickly. I'm very curious to see how far that boy will go. In the next few months, there's going to be a huge fight. Just wait until then, because that boy is from outside the tower. Why would he tell Doe on this? I mean, first of all, he knows that Bomb's outside from outside the tower and all this stuff. Crazy, right? But the weird part is, earlier he was manipulating Doe on to think that this was going to be like a bloody change in the tower, but now he's like, hey, maybe he's not so bad. Like, don't feel like you're bound by what you think. It's very odd. If this is the same person, which is heavily implied, especially with Doe on's reaction to this information, what's he doing? I think what he could be doing is helping Bomb. I think he's helping Bomb, but not necessarily for his own purposes. I, I, th I think he just wants to see what Bomb can do. Because he told Doan and Cha two different things, and I feel like from the boss's perspective, Bomb has two options. Bomb could either bring about this change or become another Jihad. What's weird is that Yule says later on, the captain is an amazing guy, he even said he knows Jihad. I get the feeling that captain who delivered that message is not the same one I was in contact with. So earlier at the beginning of season three, Yule is like, hey captain, what's going on? That captain might not be the same one that gave him the orders to say this to Doan, etc., etc. And he even says those captains are like scary dudes to mess with. There's So there's multiple captains. Obviously, these captains must be like Jihad Army regular dudes. Who knows like who these captains are, but I don't think that's as important. I just think the boss is someone who like infiltrated as a captain, perhaps. So now let's talk about his identity, because we know potentially his purposes and his goal, which I'll say at the end of the video as well, but he clearly looks like Jihad. He clearly looks very similar to both Jihad and Wangnan. So what's his deal? The Red Light District. The Red Light District is a very vague term that is used in Tower of God to describe a place 
where boys, I guess, or Wangran in particular, who came from the Red Light District, inherited the blood of Jihad. Somehow. Somehow. We don't know if it's literal, if Jihad had babies or whatever. Who knows? But that is the purpose of the Red Light District. If you don't know, Red Light District in the real world is a place where adults go to do adult things. Now, the weird part about this is they bear the rings, right? They bear these rings. So Jihad, even though the this whole program, the Red Light District, whatever it is, this whole idea of having Jihad boys or whatever, even though their existence is a shame and Jihad's worst disgrace in Rachel's words, Jihad is still giving them these rings. So maybe he still thinks they're useful to some capacity. Maybe because they inherit part of his power. Obviously they do. I mean, they're his children. And Jihad, we know, could never have children. All the babies, and I think even maybe, maybe the women, died because Jihad's blood is too powerful. So maybe they're not his literal sons. Perhaps they're like princesses where he injects boys with the blood. But I think it's not quite even that. I think they are closer to being his biological children or perhaps even clones. That's an interesting thing that people have talked about, like clones of Jihad, and I think this could make sense. Huarayun said that these, like, princes are the most terrible affair left by the Ten Great Families and Jihad, which again implies that this was, like, an intentional thing. Jihad intentionally was like, hey, I want to create these, like, princes or something, right? It wasn't like an accident. It's not like, oops, I had a I had a son. It's like, no, this was like a program, something specific. Which leads me to who is the boss? He could be Jihad in disguise, but this is very unlikely because of the mole and just the way he acts, it just wouldn't make sense. He could be a Jihad clone, which I think would make a lot of sense. Perhaps there were three Jihad clones, Wang Nam the boss and Karaka. They were each given rings and perhaps Jihad is controlling them using his ability to see fate. And maybe part of this fate ability was passed on to his clone, the boss. And maybe the immortality part of Jihad, when he created the Wang Nan clone, was passed to Wang Nan. Because Wang Nan has survived encounter after encounter after encounter and has never died. Could be Wang Nan, but that wouldn't make sense. Wang Nan is very old. But again, he doesn't have that mole next to his mouth. It's implying that it's somebody else, right? Could be Karaka, but Karaka is too young on the other hand, right? So these Jihad lookalikes are all related in some way, whether they're the biological children of Jihad or clones. I don't think it really matters. One way or another, they're an intentional disaster. It was something that went wrong. Jihad tried out something and it just didn't work. Now maybe, despite it not working, maybe him trying to create these clones, they are his failed sons, despite it, he still is using them through fate. And maybe the moles on their face, because it's strange that Wang Nan has a mole and the boss has a mole. Karaka could also have a mole, right? Maybe that's to show that there's some kind of like defects, right? They still aren't the same as Jihad. Jihad doesn't have any moles in his face. It could be a way to be like, these guys are close to being Jihad, but they're not, right? This is a this is a way to show they're close, but they're like 99% Jihads or something like that, and that considers them failures. And when it comes to Jihad passing on his immortality, we have to remember that his contract is the only one of its kind. The other immortality contracts with the 10 family heads are different. His contract is specifically for the King of the Tower. It's immortality, but it's also like invulnerability, which you might think is the same thing, but he can't die. And as far as I know, if you're a resident of the Tower, you also just cannot harm him. Those are two different things. So the boss is someone who is either working for Jihad or just snuck into the Yule Order command system with the captains because he knew the nest location and all that. It's weird that he knows this, so he either knows it because he snuck in, because he works for Jihad, or because of his fate ability. And why? The why is so important here. I really think he just sees Bomb as one of two options. The boss knows that Bomb has two different paths. He could become another Jihad, another tyrant after taking down Jihad, or he could be a new king, a king who can bring peace, unlike Jihad. This is something that has also been hinted at with like the God of Guardians. The God of Guardians sees Bomb as being similar to Jihad, but potentially different. That potential as I think what the boss is curious about. I think he wants to do everything in his power to allow Bomb to reach the point where he can fight Jihad, and then I think the boss wants to see 
what his destiny will become because Baum is someone who you can't really read his fate, right? So I think he's curious. Will Baum lead the tower in a different direction or will he cause more chaos like Jihad? I think using people like Cha, using people like Doan, it's causing a spark, but he's also using them to guide Bomb. I think he's giving Bomb like a bunch of tools to allow him to continue climbing. To top all of this mystery off, we have Ripalista Jihad, who throughout the prologue of season two hinted at the Prince of Jihad returning. And that was the title of the first saga of season two, The Return of the Prince, right? And we immediately cut to Wang Nan. It's heavily implied that he was the prince. But then she says they. They have appeared, right? So that they could mean multiple princes, but Wang Nan is the prince that returned, right? Or became relevant. Because Karaka already was a slayer, you know, and the boss has already been doing things for thousands of years, but Wang Nan was in obscurity until now, and maybe she saw through her opera that Wang Nan was about to meet Viol, and maybe that would, like, start this spark that led into season two. So overall, he's probably a son of Jihad, a clone, and he has the same abilities or similar powers to Jihad, it seems, which would make sense if he is his son or clone. And he could even be the first one because he's the oldest one that we know of. We know Wang Nan is, is old, but not that old, not Age of Genesis old, right? And Karaka is a young and new slayer. But one way or another, I think the boss wants Bomb to grow and wants Bomb to succeed because he's curious. He's curious if Bomb will choose good or bad because like the boss, he has that capacity to do good or evil, which is exactly what Doan saw in him. Someone who was not good, but maybe good, but not bad or maybe potentially evil. Thank you for watching. Uh, this was a hard one. I had to really study for this one and prepare, so I apologize. I know a lot of people wanted me to make this sooner, but I wanted to make sure I made a good video that covered this um, appropriately, right? And I probably did miss some panels and miss some scenes, so let me know in the comments down below if you have more ideas. I might make a sequel video to this because I've seen some fascinating Reddit posts, one in particular that really dives into the panels comparing the boss to Jihad. It's really, really cool. Subscribe if you're new to the channel and like the video, that'd be really awesome. Tomorrow, Towers and Gods returns. If you don't know what Towers and Gods is, it is D&D plus Tower of God. We're on episode eight right now. Even if you haven't watched the previous episodes, it's okay. Come and join in episode eight. See what it's all about. See if you want to go back and watch the old episodes. It is so much fun. We have all brand new characters. The plot is thickening on the second floor. It's so much fun. So please check it out if you think you might enjoy. And with that being said, I will see you in my next Tower of God discussion video. Take care.